Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee tonight because that You answer prayer for us. This poor dear woman laying there where surgery has failed. But, oh God, we remember the first surgery was ever performed in the earth. You did it Yourself. you would taken from the side of Adam a rib, closed up the incision and made a wife. Oh, Father, I pray tonight that your hand will come down now and will perform this great thing that we're asking for. And these others, Lord, this woman that's suffering with the mental oppression, all others who's got requests, we just commit them to thee, Father, with our whole hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Indeed, a privilege to be here tonight and uh, have this fine audience uh, look at and find singing a wonderful little choir. I was just thinking the difference. See them boys standing there with clean looking fellows, clean haircuts. I was thinking last night of the place where I'm staying, a bunch of hoodlums came in down there and trying to drown the boy in the swimming pool. They had to call out something to get him out of there. What a difference see kids standing singing the gospel songs. What a difference. Thinking his brother Henry said there, those men with them hair like the women should have. See, that, uh, that's, uh, that's right. It looked like the, uh, I see these boys trying to have that hair, even put these roller curlers in it around their face. And I don't know. Uh, sometimes I've become discouraged. It looks like it, it's a true uh, a time of perversion. Men are trying to wear women's clothes and women wearing man's clothes and men leaving their hair like women and women having hair like man. What's the matter with this people anyhow? Has uh, really the uh, very threads of decency and honor left this nation and these people, this world? This is a horrible time. But it's the most glorious time in the world to preach the gospel. If I could have stood on the brink of time before it come into existence and the Father would look at me and said, What time down through these ages would you want to preach? I want it right now. It's right now, just for it's coming. Looking out upon the audience, sitting here before us, a minister friend of mine in Tucson uh, yesterday was riding a horse, thinking this man with this, this woman with a disc in her back. This horse threw him. Another man called me at 1 o'clock this morning to my hotel and said the man's veterans hospital and his eyes are glassy, his back is mashed, his kidneys are pushed out and his heart's about to fail. And there I got down on the floor on my knees, the telephone, got him on the other end and prayed for him. And here he sits, you're right. <laughs> Sitting right here, that was last night. Bob, would you just stand up there? Stand right there. God answers prayer. Morning, night, noon time, midnight, or any time. Now, I, I am such a long-winded preacher, as they call it. I just kind of hate to get started this time of night. Uh, uh, I thought I'd just come over the other night while I was speaking over here at a certain place, and then 15 minutes after I'd been on, the people was picking up the dishes and motioning to me, quit, shut up, we got to get out of here and smoking cigarettes and carry on. It wasn't the... the Banquet's fault. It was the people that we had to rent it from, and the, the chairman's wife went around and told the manager. Said, "said well, You're supposed to be out here at nine thirty. He said, You never put that in the contract." This lady tonight, she come down here, a real nice lady, and she said, "We understood that you wanted to just take it as long as you want." So, that, so I'm very thankful for that. That's very fine, brother Henry. I certainly appreciate your your kindness of inviting me here in this chapter. I had the privilege last night of being down here at the Assemblies of God where I believe a Brother Boone is pastor. I had a wonderful time down there with that group of people. And tomorrow night we're going somewhere over here. I don't know where it's at. And it's a, another chapter. They take care of it. I just keep praying, reading, and going on. And that's about all I can keep up with. But now we're seeing strange things in this day. Now, I've... I remember the last time I was here, it was in a tent meeting. 
I remember the, uh, speaking of it last night, a little couple that brought their dead baby in. So some were up here that drove all day and night. The little mother sitting sad, holding that little baby in her arms. Now she may be sitting right here now, for all I know. And she, uh, the little husband, a couple more couples with them, and they was, um, and she said, asked me if I'd come over, the man did, took a car. I took the little baby out, and was just holding a little dead, stiff, cold farm. I started to pray, and when I prayed, that body began to feel like it getting warm. So I just start, kept on praying, just started kicking and moving, going on, so I started crying. I handed it back to the mother, and she went back home with it. So they might not even be Christians, for all I know. See, that was wonderful. But what I'm thinking about tonight, I know a church is dying, too. It's our Pentecostal people. we got to shake out of this. That's all. And all we can go to is prayer and lining up with the Word of God. It's the only way we're going to do it. There's only one way out. He's that way. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. But we want our church to get in the conditions. He said over there, like in England, that's the reason I've been, you think, so rude, bawling you out. And I don't mean to do that. But I don't want to see the church get in that kind of a shape. You don't want to be in that shape. You, you've just got to drive it down so hard to you nail it and make it clinch. It's got to be done. So now, tonight, I've just got a, some scriptures and texts here I want to speak on for a, a while. I ain't going to say it on a certain time. <laughs> get tired, but I may be doing it 30 minutes. And it just depends on I always just kind of leave it to the Holy Spirit, just whichever way He leads. Let's bow our heads just a moment longer. Speak to the author before we open his book. Almighty God, the author of this book, through Jesus Christ we pray. We are thankful for what we've already heard tonight. If we should, uh, should punctuate this meeting by saying amen and go home, it was good to be here. For we know that you've been with us. And Father, as we open this word, now speak to us directly out of this word that we might know the hour that we're living. If we know the hour we're living, then we can prepare for that hour. But if we go in blindly, not knowing what or where, then we don't know how to prepare. So, Father, we pray that you'll uh, let us see the ark there and the door open and the message calling us in. Grant it through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. In the Holy Scriptures, I want to read a text here found over in the book of St. Luke at the 24th uh, chapter. But I'm going to begin at the 13th verse and uh, read a portion of it. And we told two of them, they went the same day from the village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score, score four long. And they talked together these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these, that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And that one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And how is thou not knowing all these things which have come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to the, be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain of the women also of our company made us astonished, which were at the sepulcher. When they found not his body, they came saying that it also seen a vision of angels which said unto them, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but he they but him they saw not. Then he said to them, O fools and slow of heart to believe not to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and entered into his glory? 
and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his words. Now, I take, if I call it a subject, I'd like to take this, that events, modern events, are made clear by prophecy. Now, it's always been God's, the unchanging God's uh, way to for, uh, let his people foreknow before certain events happen. If the people in the days of the Lord Jesus would have only a, a sought God and known what was just about to take place, they would not have condemned Jesus to death. But the reason it was because the scriptures had to be fulfilled. Because the Jews had to be blinded. We all are aware of that. Do you realize that that's promised again in this very age that we're living? The Lady of Sin church age, this seventh church age that we're in now, is naked, miserable, blind, and don't know it. The same as he blinded them back there for the purpose of getting his message through to the elected people, he's promised to do the same thing today. And if I'd say this to respects to all my brethren and sisters in Christ, one of these days somebody's going to say, isn't it written that these things should happen first? And it'll be the same way it was. And verily I say unto you, he's already come. And they had did what they listed to him. When they asked and said, why well, the scribes say, and the scriptures say that that Elias must first come. They said that to Jesus. He said, He's already come and you didn't know him. See? And that's perhaps the way it'll end up again. Now we want to be posted to know what's to take place for this age that we live in. God has lotted His Word to each age, so much to each age. And we must notice that one age cannot carry over into another age. It just won't work. For instance, as I said, I believe last night, or constantly speaking night after night places and sometimes I make the remark the second time I don't mean to repeat myself but I'd say this what would it, good would it have done Moses to try to preach Noah's message or what good would it been would have done Jesus to try to preach Moses message or what good would it have done Martin Luther to continue on with the Catholic message what good would it have done Wesley to continue on with the Lutheran message. What good would it have done Pentecostal to continue on with the Methodist message? Or what good will it do Pentecost to continue on when the bride's being called? We're right up into the seed time. We're here at the end time. Now, unless a corn of wheat falls into the earth, it abides alone. As a critic, as I've made remarks since the book come out, probably you've got it here in your, your city, that German author that wrote one of the most critical articles is an infidel. Of course, not, I'm not condemning him because he's condemned me so, but because being an infidel, the book should never be on the shelves. And uh, he said a God that could set up and say he could open up the Red Sea and deliver his people and then sit with his hands across his stomach and see through the dark ages those Christians being torn to pieces by lions those mothers with their hair saturated and tired hung on to crosses and burned and, and their baby expecting mothers to split the stomach and gamble on the sex of the child and, and set up and let it happen. People who are supposed to be servants of this God. You see, the scripture is inspiration. You'll never be able to know the scripture just by sitting down and reading it from a theological standpoint, from an educational standpoint. It never has worked. I was speaking with a Baptist minister not long ago. He said, until we learn the correct Greek, until we... I said, in the Nicaea Council, before that, they were arguing about the Greek words in the Bible. You'll never know it. The Bible is to be revealed by inspiration. That's the only thing. The revelation. Jesus told Peter, upon this rock, this rock of revelation, reveals who he is. Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonas. Flesh and blood is not revealed this to you. But my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this to you. Upon this rock I'll build my church. Amen. Not upon Peter, not upon himself, but upon the spiritual revelation of who he was. Amen. And he is the Word. St. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hebrews 13, 8, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, we're living in the day when the manifestation of the Word of God 
has to come to a different age than the Pentecostal age. That's right. Remember, you're, I'm an uneducated person. But you can't beat nature because God works in the continuity of nature. Just like as I said, the sun rises and sets and goes through the day and like a school age and dies in the evening to rise again the next morning. The trees let the sap down in the wintertime, go into the roots and come back in the spring. Notice, he liked it to a grain of wheat, the bride. The reason that God had to let that go like that, that fine, real, genuine church that was established on the day of Pentecost, had grown and grown since the day of Pentecost into a great church. It had to fall into the earth in that dark age and be buried like all seed does. It had to die so it could come forth in the Reformation again. It come forth in the person of a Reformation, Martin Luther. And from there is like a stalk of wheat coming up. The first thing comes up is two little blades. Then it keeps adding more blades. Up come Martin Luther and then Swangley and on down Calvin and as it moved on. Finally, it goes into a tassel. Now, that was John Wesley in the Wesley age. It had a pollen drop back. From there come the Pentecostal age. So close, just like a real grain of wheat, if you look at the stalk. But if you'll take that wheat and move it back, there's not one grain in it at all. It's only a shuck in the shape of a grain. But it's set there for a purpose to shelter the grain. Until the sun hits it like that, it'd kill it. It's got to stay in there until a certain time that all the life leaves the shuck as it left the stalk, left the pollen, leaves the shuck and goes into the wheat and forms again just like it was down in the ground. Now all of us know that whenever a message is given in three years, they form an organization. When they do that, it kills it right there. It did in the days of Luther, of course. It did it in the days of Wesley. It did it in the days of Alexander Campbell and all the rest of them. And it did it in the days of Pentecost. Exactly. See, you get to a place, each one gets starchy and gets off and they can't receive new revelation. They're settled down and there they are and there they die. And the life goes right through that. It goes right on to make the wheat. And when the wheat comes, that life that's traveled through that wheat, the resurrection brings the whole thing out. That's what brings up for the rapture. Now remember, this message started first with divine healing, performing miracles. Now if God let that go through an ordinary church, just like we already had, then it wasn't God. God don't have to show off. He don't, he don't have to do these things to entertain us like we Americans are used to. Entertainment. But he does it to attract the attention of the people. That he's fixing to do something. Look at him himself when he comes. The wonderful little prophet, the rabbi, the prophet of Galilee. Why, his ministry was wonderful. He's welcome in every church. But one day he sat down and said, I, my father, are one. Oh, my. Amen. That was out. Away with such a fellow. Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Why, he's a vampire. Get away from such a person. See? See, there was something had to follow that sign. It's something followed. The shuck held it. But now the shuck pulls away. It has to. And remember, 20 years has passed by and no more denominations has come out of it and it won't. We're at the end of denominations. The wheat's taking shape. But what's the matter with the wheat? Now you can't, it must lay in the presence of the sun to ripen before the combine picks it up. Now the events that we see taking place, it's absolutely showed in the Bible of every age. We think we're all out of cater, but we're not. Everything's moving just exactly with God's Word. Now, the Bible is a different book from any other sacred book. There's no book like the Bible because the Bible is God in word form. It's a word is a thought expressed. God's thinking expressed it, His words through the prophets, and they wrote the Bible, which is in word form, and Jesus called it a seed, and any seed will bring forth of its kind if it's in the right condition, the right atmosphere. Now, this book of, is a this book of prophecy it's, is foretelling future events. Now, the book contains the entire revelation of Jesus Christ. You don't add to it or take from it, and every revelation must come by it. The, it must be the Word. So people say, I had a revelation. Yes, we know Joseph Smith and many had revelations and things, but it was contrary to the Word. It's got to come according to the Word if it comes from God. Because it's to vindicate or to prove God's uh, presence. And he foreknew all these things being by his foreknowledge. He ordained, foreordained, it's called in the Bible, predestinated 
every age to its place and every man to its place and every messenger to its place. He is God. The devil ain't pulling up over on him. And he's God and he has ordained everything to take place and falls just exactly in line with his word. So if we can see by his word what age and what time we're living, you'll see it right here in the Bible. At this age, what we're supposed, what's supposed to take place at this time. Now, the, the other books, we find lots of books that they call sacred books and so forth. And I've read the, the Koran and many others. But you see, there are, those sacred books are only a code of ethics, of morals, or of theology. But this book is a prophet. It's a different from any other book. The Bible is a word of God foretelling the future. It foretells because it's forewarned. If God sends anything, he says and promised in the Bible that he would do nothing upon the earth until first he revealed it to his servants, the prophets. That's Amos 3, 7. He, and God cannot lie. He reveals it. That's been his way of doing it all down through the ages. He's never failed to do it. Now, we are promised in the last days for this to be restored. There will be no, no church, no denomination, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostals, They'll never in their modern conditions ever take this church to a bride. Amen. They can't do it. They fail. They're too much at one another's throats. And worldliness has creeped in and so forth. And, and they died right in their tracks. And so God knows that. And to reveal this word once, say, well, I got this. And uh, bless God, it's like that. That's just the way it was when Jesus came the first time. Amen. Everyone has a doctrine. Everyone has this. It'll have to be something sent to us from God. Amen. And God's promised it. And the only way you do this is keep his same pattern. He promised to send us in this last days, according to Malachi 4, a prophet upon the earth that would turn the hearts of the people back, uh, the hearts of the children back to the apostolic fathers again. He promised that in his word. Luke 17 and many other places that he promised it, that he what he would do in these last days to bring this thing to a vindicated word. See, a man can say anything. But unless God interprets that word. See, now we have our own interpretation. We say it means this, and this is Methodist says this, the Baptist says this, the Pentecostal says this, the oneness says this, the tuna says this, and oh my, there you are. But God don't need no interpreter. He's his own interpreter. He interprets his own word by vindicating it in the age that is purpose for, the age that is given for. We're not living in a Pentecostal age, we're living in another age. See, we're not living in the Methodist age. We're living in another age. We're living on up here to the bride age, the calling out of the church and getting it together for the rapture. That's the age that we're now living. To my honest opinion, that's exactly the truth. And uh, this book is a book of prophecy. Its believers are commanded to uh, honor it and to read it and believe its author for every word that's written in there must come to pass. Everything that's been promised has to come to pass because it is Jesus Christ in each age. The same yesterday, it was Jesus Christ as in Noah, it was Jesus Christ in Moses, it was Jesus Christ in David, it was Jesus Christ in Joseph. It's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it's Jesus Christ among his people today doing the things that he promised he would do in this age. It's Jesus Christ. But the church has become so starchy, so far away like the brother said here. And, and our churches are becoming the same way until we've got to have something to shake us back to the Word. Amen. How do we know it's going to do it? It's got to come according to God's own plan. Amen. It cannot come by laymen. It will not come by the businessman. It cannot come by churches. Amen. God laid down His plan. Amen. I spoke here at Shreveport the other day on the national broadcast across the nation that trying to do God a service without being God's will David tried to bring the ark of God back into the house. He is anointed king. Why, he, he consulted his, his delegates, his captains of thousands and ten thousands and so forth. And they all said, that's the word of the Lord. And they consulted the priests. That was wonderful. And they all got so inspired. They shouted. They'd done every religious act it was. And it was absolutely contrary to God's will. Because there was a prophet in the land by the name of Nathan. And he wasn't even consulted about it. And we found out it didn't work, though they were sincere, trying to do God a service. And you can be ever so sincere, but until we know what we're doing, you're fighting at the air. Come back into the Word of God and get lined up and then go. Then, you know, 
like a, a soldier don't know what to do until he gets orders to do it. We must be Christian soldiers and get orders from the Bible. Amen. For the hour now, not the charge yesterday, the charge the day before, but the charge today, which way we go. Find out the hour that we're living in. These modern events are slipping by us too swiftly, and one day we're going to find out we'll be left behind without nothing and be caught, sealed into the mark of the beast before we know it. Now, with patience, we have to wait for this, for the prophecies as promised Every one of them must be fulfilled in its age. For it foretells us the author has before done this and we wait to see him do it again. What a time it is that we're living in. Something like uh, a calendar. You look at the calendar, find out uh, what day of the year you're living in. And you look at God's Bible to see what age we're living in. We're not living in the Methodist age, the Baptist age. We're living in the bride age, the calling, bringing back to God through a channel that He promised to bring it back in. He promised to it. But as it's been in every age, people uh, let man put their own interpretation to it by theology and will not believe God's divine vindication of it. Amen. That's God's interpretation. Not what I say, what somebody else says, but what God has promised and what God does proves that it's God doing His own interpreting of His Word. Amen. They told you Pentecostals uh, 45, 50 years ago, your mothers and fathers, when they were genuine Pentecostals, come out of the organization and cursed the thing and walked out of it, then like a dog to its vomit went right back in it again. Right. Done the same thing. You killed that church. You killed your own by the same thing. Nothing against the people in there. Nothing against the, It's the systems of the thing that's what's doing it. Home, I'm, go home. I don't preach this in other man's meeting. I'm going to preach this trail of the serpent and listen to it if you take the faith. And notice, they this seen the confirmation of the prophecies of God's word being fulfilled. If those priests, they had it fixed up just exactly the way the Messiah was going to come. They know what was going to take place. The, Phar the Pharisees had their idea, the Sadducees and Rhodians and all they had their ideas. But he come not he come contrary to every one of them, but exactly with the word. Amen. Jesus said the same thing was here. If you would have known me, you should have known my day. Amen. If you had known you, you said, Well, Moses, we have Moses. He said, Why, well, if you would believe Moses, you'd believe me because he wrote of me. Amen. But see, when God was confirming exactly what he promised. They had it in some kind of a dignified way that Jesus was supposed to come and the, I mean the Messiah. And the Messiah had to come right to their group or he wasn't Messiah. Well, it's that way almost today. If you don't see through my glasses, you're not looking at all. See? And so that's, that's just the way it, it, it is. We, that's the truth. We hate to think that, but it's absolutely the truth. In uh, Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, God in sundry times wrote the Bible by his own chosen way. He never wrote it by theologians. Neither does he interpret by theologians. Amen. There never was a time that, that the theologians ever had an interpretation of the Word of God. The interpretation comes only to a prophet. Amen. And the only way we're ever going to get out of this mess is for God to send us that prophet. Amen. Just exactly. The only way it's going to be done. It's been believed, watched for, and, and fulfillment. See, it was not wrote by man, but it was wrote by God. It's not a man's book. It's not a theologian's book. It's a book of God, which is a book of prophecy, wrote by the prophets and interpreted by the prophets. Amen. The Bible said the word of the Lord comes to the prophets. Exactly. How beautiful that was illustrated or demonstrated when Jesus was come on earth and John was the prophet of that day and he, he was prophesying. They said, oh, you mean to say that God's going to tear down our big association here and all these things? And there's going to be a time and our temples won't no more be worshiping. He said uh, there was coming a time when God would make a sacrifice out of the Lamb of God, a man. And he said that, that he would know him when he come. He said he was so sure of his message. He said he's standing right among you now and you don't know it. Amen. He's right among you and you don't know it. And one day when Jesus walked out, John looked up and seen that sign above him. He said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. That same minute Jesus knew then it, he was vindicated before the people. Now, he was the Word. Would we doubt that? The Bible said he was the Word. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And here he is. Here's the Word on earth, look perfectly, comes right out into the water to the prophet. Right, the Word always comes to his prophet. So we can't expect it to come to theologians. We can't expect it to come to denominations. It's got to come to God's channel route that he foretold us about, and that's the only way it'll ever come. It'll be hated, despised, rejected. When it does come, it'll be thrown out to one side and everything, but God will do it anyhow. It was rejected in Jesus Christ. It was rejected in John. It was rejected by Jeremiah. It was rejected by Moses. It's always that way, but God moves right on in the way that he promised he would do it. Yes, sir, he never does fail to do it the same way. The man who's seen the vision or heard his voice never altogether understood it. In many cases, he didn't know because he's just an instrument of God. It's God's thoughts expressed through man's lips. A thought, of course, is a word expressed. God does his own choosing by his, uh, his predestinated choosing. He'd done it in every age. He set forth the man. For each age, like when Moses, when he was to fulfill what he told Abraham, Moses had born a proper child. He couldn't help being that way. He was born that way because he was born for that purpose. And so we find out that God does that in every age. God does his own choosing by his own predestinated choosing, chooses prophets and things for the age. Fixes, uh, fixes his uh, nature, the man's nature, the man's style of preaching, the honor, gift, and all that he does is to meet the challenge of that day. God creates that man and sent him. And in his own mind, as I preached on last night, we are a germ of the Jane of God. He knew that man would be there at that age before there ever was a molecule or a light or anything else in the earth. Amen. For you're a Jane of your father. And you were in your father, yet your father had no fellowship with you because he... You was in there, but you knew it not, and he knew it not. But you was manifested that you might that he might fellowship with you. And you being born again, you're born of eternal life. And that the only one form of eternal life, and that's God's life. Yeah. Zoe, the Greek word. Is Zoe only one form of eternal life? Then if you are a son of God or a daughter of God, you are in God all the time. Yeah. But he knew what bed and time that you'd be planted. So now you're made a creature, a son of God, manifested son or daughter of God to meet the challenge of this hour to vindicate the true and living God of this hour, the message that's coming forth in this time. That's right. You were done that before the foundation of the world. If it wasn't, if you wasn't chose that way, no matter how much you try to impersonate it, you'll never make it. How can you get blood from a turnip when there's no blood in there? That's the reason I try to say about you know, people thinking we should... We're hollering at women about short hair and people telling me about saying those things you're going to ruin your ministry. Ruin a ministry that God himself ordained for a bit. When people hear the word of God, when a baby is conceived in the womb of a mother, when that one cell goes in there, another cell bells on top of that. It's not one cell of a human, the next of a dog, the next of a cat, the next of something else. It's absolutely straightly human being. And when a man's born of the Spirit of God, he don't inject anything into his life. It's not adulterated. Word of God vindicated for that hour. He takes the full Word of God. He don't put no creeds, nothing else into it. It's purely unadulterated. God's Word made manifest among us. Look in the Bible. You see what age we're living in then when you see these great things being made manifest. When God promised to do it, He always does it. At the end of each age, when the church has come to the turning place and it's turned from the Word back to sin and worldliness. Worldliness is sin. Amen. The Bible said if you love the world or the things of the world, the love of God's not even in you. Speaking last night, I was speaking about the, the sacrifice that was offered, the Lamb. It was to be seven days representing the seven church ages. There was to be no leaven found amongst the people. No leaven for seven days. That means that there's nothing mixed with it. It's unleavened constantly. And we don't want no creeds, leavens, and things mixed with us. We don't want world mixed with us. It's got to be the unleavened bread of God, the Word of God, the unadulterated Word of God, which man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. 
our denominational systems and differences and things has put leaven in us and this and that and world and fashion and oh, it's got so it's almost Hollywood everywhere. It'll finally come to be like England there. An altar call will be ashamed. My, his brother said, how can you get the fish in a boat? That's right. We've got to have the gospel preached in its fullness with the power of God to vindicate that according to the promise of that age and prove that that's exactly God's will. Outside of that, you're just a church member. No matter how much you try, you try to do God a service. You might go to stitch and soul party. You might be ever so faithful at church. But unless that germ of eternal life was foreordained in you to be a son or daughter of God, you'll grow up a deformed something, but never be a real true son or daughter of God. Often give my little story of my little eagle. How the farmer set the hen one time and he had, I hope it don't sound sacrilegious to you, but a farmer set a hen. And she was like one egg and having a setting. I doubt where anybody here knows what a setting of eggs is, how much it consists of. But anyhow, he liked one egg and having it up. So he robbed the eagle's nest. She had two eggs. And he put the egg under the hen. When that eagle was hatched amongst all them chickens, he was a funny bird. He couldn't understand the clucking of the hen. It didn't talk like this, like he wanted to hear it talk. And she scratched in the barnyard, eat from the barnyard. It wasn't food for him. He's an ugly duckling among them. The hen had clucked and he didn't understand it. She'd go this way and eat this and eat that. He didn't understand it. So one day his mammy, or mother rather, to you know, <laughs> I mean, we're in the South, we say mammy. So anyhow, he, his, 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 his mother uh, knowed she had two eggs. And only one of them was there. She went after the other one. She circled ever across the country and finally she flew over the barnyard. She seen him down there following that old hen. She screamed, Junior, you're not a chicken, you're an eagle. That sounded just right to him. Why? He was an eagle to begin with. And when a man or woman is set under creeds and cold formal religion, if he's ordained to be a son of God and he sees the word of God preached in his power and God vindicated, he's an eagle to begin with. He'll run to it as sure as two twos is four. He can't help it. Because his very nature loves the word of God. I don't care what anybody else says when he sees the word of God being made manifest, he flies to it. Because he the little eagle is to go on to say, he said, Mama, I'm going to get up from here. And he said, just make a jump. I'll catch you. <laughs> That's the only thing you have to do is make one jump to your feet, one jump to God, one promise. Lord Jesus, I believe you with all my heart. I believe the message of the hour. I see it confirmed and I know it's right. Jump to your feet. Mama, I'll catch you. Don't worry. You're an eagle. She'll be right there to get you. Now we realize that we're living in a tremendous time and a great time. But when the truths of this Bible believers has seen that vindicated, the very vindication of it is the evidence that God is in it. Absolutely. It's then that the promised word that God promised is made known. The seed is bursted forth and they see it and they believe it. Others just can't see it. Somehow they'll sit and look at it. You know, I've preached hard enough to, to cross this country that it shouldn't be a short-haired woman in the country. Amen. But every time when I come back, is more. <laughs> What's the matter? There's something wrong. Amen. You know the Word says that. Right. You say, well, that don't make any difference. It does make a difference. There's a fine brother said, I'm going to lay hands on you, Brother Bram. I love you. You're ruining your ministry. He said, you ain't got no business telling them women about that. He said, uh, let the pastors do it. I said, they don't do it. Amen. I said, now. He said, well, it's not your business. You just pray for the sick. I said, whose business is it then? I was called to preach the gospel. He said, I'll lay hands on you and ask God to take it away from you. I said, if you'll let, let me lay hands on you too. See? And I said, I'll pray that God will open your eyes and you'll see it. So that's right. He said, you ought to preach. The people believe you to be a servant, a prophet of God. He said, you ought to teach them women how to, to get great gifts and prophesy and things. I said, how can I teach them algebra when they won't even believe their ABCs? That's right, so you, you can't do it. It's just an ever. That's right. If you can't do the common things, how are you going to do the spiritual things, the natural things? Certainly. Brother, sister, it might sound like a joke, but it's a gospel. It's a, it's a gospel truth. Right. Notice, we find today that people, as many people just can't believe it. Even spirit-filled people. Of course, give you one little chokey. The baptism of the Holy Ghost don't mean you're going in. 
Not at all. Amen. Not going to happen. Now, having to do with your soul, that's a baptism, see. Here's the inside soul in here. That has to come from God. But then on the outside, you have five senses and five out inlets to your contact your earthly home. The inside, you have a spirit. And in there, you have five outlets, your conscience and love and so forth, five outlets to that spirit. Remember, in that spirit, you can be baptized with the genuine spirit of God and still be lost. It's the soul that lives. That was ordained of God. Didn't Jesus say, many will come to me that day and say, Lord, haven't I cast out devils, done great mighty works, prophesied the great gifts of God? He said, depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never even knew you. Many will come in that day. Didn't Caiaphas prophesy? He was a devil. We find out there, and that priest, a great man was supposed to be great leaders in them days with humility and everything else, but failed to see the Word of God itself made manifest before them. We could just take a bunch of them I got wrote down here. How about Balaam? He was a... You say God changes His mind. He doesn't change His mind. When Balaam went out as a prophet... Went out there a bishop, preacher, whatever you want to call him. He's a great man. But when he consulted God about going down there and cursing Israel, he didn't like him to begin with. So when he asked to go, God said, don't go. Then they sent a dignitary, but some maybe a bishops or presbyters or something down, said uh, more education to persuade him. He went back and asked God again. You don't have to ask God the second time. When God says it first, that's it. You don't have to wait anything. Rebecca didn't wait to get the second order. The asked her, said, will you go? Let her say. She said, I'll go. Yeah. She was firmly inspired of God. She became one of the queens of the Bible for acting upon the uh, pulsation of the Spirit of God that moved up on her to receive what was absolutely the truth. Amen. And she believed it. Now we find out, Balaam, of course, he couldn't see. He went out and looked upon the people and said, now, just a minute. We're great big people up here. You're just a scattered bunch, you see. And we, are, we all believe the same God. That's true. They all believe the same God. Amen. They all worship Jehovah. Look at Balaam's sacrifice. Seven altars. God's perfect number of the seven churches. See? Seven rams, speaking of the coming of the Lord. Fundamentally, he was just as fundamental as Moses was. Amen. But you see, there wasn't a divine vindication. In there, there were both prophets, but under Moses' ministry, there was a supernatural pillar of fire, a light that hung with the camp. There was divine healing. There was a shout of the... Of the King in the camp, great signs, divine healing, and wonders and things performed among them. It was a sign of a living God among his people. Amen. Fundamentally, is both right. And Balaam tried to persuade the people and bewitched them into it. Amen. When? Just before they reached the promised land. Amen. Another day or two, they'd been in the promised land. But now I'm afraid. This is a hard mark to make. Some of these days I'll be shot for it. But remember this. That the churches are being bewitched with this ecumenical council. He's taking it right into it to say you're the same group. You're not the same group. Come out from among that stuff and be separated. It certainly is. It's true. We are keep away from that stuff as far as you can from it. Balaam said, we're, let's our children marry together because after all, we believe the same God. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? How can you walk with God unless you're agreed with His Word? How can you add creeds and so forth to it when you're ordained not to do it or commanded not to do it? Amen. You can't do it. There's no way of doing it, brother, sister. You can't mix that leaven with the unleaven. Oil right. and water will not mix. Amen. Darkness and light will not mix. Light so much power that it just puts the darkness out. Amen. And so we cannot mix it together. Neither can you mix sin and the world together. You can't mix church and denomination together. You can't mix church and creed together. You can't mix the world and the gospel together. It won't mix. Come out from among them. Be ye separated, saith God. I'll receive you to myself. You'll be my sons and daughters. I'll be God to you. We can never do it until these things are manifested in the Word of God for the hours proved to be the truth. Follow in the footsteps. Pentecost, that's why Luther lost his message. That's how Wesley lost his message. See, if the Wesley church would have went on, they'd been Pentecostals. If the Luthers went on, they'd been Methodists. See? And now if the Pentecost will go on, it'll be the bride. If you hang back and keep going back in the world like you're going now, you'll be lost. It'll only be the shuck and the stalk is to be burned. We know that. He'll gather his wheat into the garner, but the husk, he'll burn with unquenchable fire. Although it was a carrier, it certainly carried it, but the life left it as soon as it became a leaf. It went on out to make something else until it come to its full statue. 
And so the church come through justification, sanctification, baptism, the Holy Ghost, restoration of gifts, right on into the form image of Christ. Christ is the bridegroom. The church is the bride. And the bride is a part of the bridegroom. It'll have to be a word church. Not a denominational church. It'll be the word church. The word that's made known by the vindicated word of God. Balaam, he couldn't see the difference. Many came. Pharaoh couldn't see it. Though it vindicated right before him. Dathan couldn't see it. Amen. Dathan come out there and he seen Moses. And no, he went out there and said, you try to think you're the only one of the bunch. The whole congregation's holy. God never did deal with like that. Amen. He ought to know better than that. And he said, well, the whole congregation's holy. You try to make yourself, as we said today in the street expression, the only pebble on the beach. And Moses knew that God had sent him down there for that. He just said, Lord, fell in the doorway of the tabernacle, and God said, separate yourself from me. And he swallowed him up. And remember the sin that Israel did, but Balaam saying they're all the same, that sin never was forgiven Israel. And look, let me give you a striking figure. Out of two million that left Egypt, two of them went into the promised land. Every one of them eat the same thing. They all danced in the spirit. They all had everything in common. But when it comes to the separating time, the word done the separating. So is it today. Word done the separating. When it comes time, you you said, well, here we're so close. Look, the Bible said in the last days, the two spirits, Matthew 24, 24, would be so close it would deceive the very elected if it's possible. That shuck looks just exactly like the wheat. But it ain't the wheat. It isn't the wheat, but it looks just exactly like it. So close it would deceive the very elected. You denominate it and fall into that nomination and dry up and die, and the wheat moves right on out to the exactly right. It's a carrier, but not the wheat. Remember, the wheat just keeps going on. And in the resurrection, all that strength of the wheat will come right up into the wheat as it goes to make the head to come out in the great resurrection. Never forgive him. Let's stop here just a moment. I hope I don't choke you out. But look, let me ask you something. Let's just take that, say, for instance, if this count would be right. When the sperm from male and female come, if you ever know test tubes or, or high breeding and so forth of cattle, you'll find out that the discharge from the male puts out about a million germs. And the discharge from the female puts out a million eggs. But did you know there's only one of them that's fertile? Them little calves or whatever they are, and these millions of germs, or million germs, there'll be that one little germ will work itself up among the rest of them germs to go right over and find that fertile egg and crawl into it, and the rest of them die. One of them is ordained to life. The others are not, though they're all the same. One out of a million. What if it would be that way tonight? These 500 million supposed to be, I think, Christians in the world. About that figure. This round figure. If the rapture would come tonight then, and the living going, there'd only be 500 people. Well, there's that many missing any day almost that they can't count for. The bride would be taken away and we'd wonder what's all about and the people going out on preaching saying they're getting this and that and the other and look what a deception that would be. Amen. Amen. Say if it would be that. I don't say it is. I don't know. I'm no authority of that. God's a judge of that. But look how easy it could happen and all figures and things, how it could be proven. Why didn't Korah see that? Why didn't Dathan see that? Why didn't Ahab see it? When Ahab, when Jehoshaphat went out to Ahab, he said, Ahab, we are in trouble. Do you know God gave us this land? Joshua divided up. You know this piece of ground up here that the Syrians taken. Isn't that our ground? Yes. Our children's hungry and the Syrians, our enemy, are feeding their children's, filling their bellies with the wheat that ought to be ours. That's scripturally right said, will you help me to go up there and take that? Now, sometimes a good man under the influence of evil will give in. Better watch, church, watch real close. Now, the first thing you know, Jehoshaphat being a great religious man, he said, well, we should go up, sure, our church, we're all the same people. But they wasn't the same people. No, he said, well, our church is your church, our people is your people. Sure, we'll go. He said, but let's consult the Lord first. So he said, oh, Ahab, no doubt, we should have thought of that. Well, we, is he a prophet of the Lord? He said, i got a seminary full of them. i got 400 down here, the best ones there is. They all got their PhD, LLD, double LDs, and 
everything else that goes with it. They're everyone. Now remember, they were Hebrew prophets Amen. from a school of prophets. Amen. So bring them up and they share them. And I believe it was Zedekiah, the great head of them, the bishop, all of them, come up there and he had the inspiration. He had inspiration. Absolutely. He come up there and made himself two big iron horns. He said, you know, thus saith the Lord, you're going to take these horns and push the Syrians from out of the country. Well, all the rest of them prophesied. That's exactly right. Every one of the whole seminary in agreement. Amen. Ahab said, you see, Jehoshaphat is being kind of spiritual, you know. He hasn't dried up altogether. He said, but isn't there just another one somewhere? Amen. That we could consult. Why do you want to consult others when the whole ecumenical, or the whole council, it says it's all right. Excuse me. See, the whole thing said that's what we ought to do. That's what we should do. He said, but isn't there just another one somewhere? That odd one, you know. He said, yes, there is. There's one, Micah, the son of Emlyn, but I hate him. Always that way. I hate him because he's always just bawling our people out and cursing me and telling me all evil about me. I hate the man. He said, oh, don't let the king say so. He said, go get him. So they went over there at the son of Emlyn, some of the, the bishops or some of the elders went over there and said, now listen, you want to get back in the organization again? You say the same thing that they say, they bring you back. But there happened to be that God had a man. They couldn't put their hands on him. God had his hands on him. He was a reflector of God's truth. He said, sure. He said, I'll go down. But I'll only say what God puts in my mouth. There's the man of God. He said, give me the night. So the night come, and the Lord spoke to the prophet, little nobody, and first thing you know, he came out the next morning and said, what about it, Emily? He said, go on up. But I've seen Israel scattered like sheep on the hills, having no shepherd. He said, what did I tell you? What did I tell you about it? And he said, then the big bishop walked up and slapped him in the mouth. said, which way the Spirit of God go? Because I know I had the Spirit. I danced in it. I done all these things. See, I, I had the Spirit on me. Which way did it go? I've seen him being a son of God or a real prophet of God. He examined his vision with the Word. If it wasn't with the Word, it's wrong. See, the Word for that hour. See? Now I said, scripturally, the land belonged to him. The land was theirs. Scripturally, everything seemed to be right, but one thing. Remember, it was one word that caused the whole mess to come. Eve disbelieved one word of God. Amen. In the first of the Bible, one word caused the trouble. Jesus come in the middle of the Bible and said, Man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. At the end of the Bible, it said, Whosoever shall take one word out or add one word to it. It's not part of the gospel. The Methodists has part of the Baptist, Presbyterians, and so forth. They have part of it. Catholic have part of it. Right. Jehovah Witness, all the rest of them. But it's the whole word. Amen. All the word. Amen. The word of the hour. Amen. What counts? We'll never do it until God anoints a prophet that can stand and tell it. Amen. And confirm it and right. prove it that it's right. Amen. It'll slip right through the people and they'll never know it. Just like it's always been. You Catholic, like Joan of Arc, you burned the stake for being a witch. Later, you dug up that priest's body 200 years later and throwed him in a river. You didn't know St. Patrick and the rest of them. It'll go right through your hands again, the first thing you know. God will do it, and you'll never even know it's done. See, so he just slips right through and gets his bride and takes her out on it and steals her away right out of the midst of the people. We find out, this little Micah said he examined, he knew that God had said to a real prophet before him. A prophet before him. What did he say? He said this. He said, Ahab, because you shed the righteous, for the blood of the righteous Naboth, the dogs will lick your blood also in Jezebel. Amen. And that's just exactly had to come to pass because God had said it. How could that prophet prophesy good when it was evil against it? Amen. How can I tell this lady of sin, church ain't the good things when God spoke against it? Amen. Amen. You're naked, miserable. You say, I'm rich. I have better. I have churches like the Methodists and the Baptists and the Presbyterians. I have this, I have that, the best, this, that, the other. That's right, but don't know that you're naked, blind, miserable to the real thing that God's manifesting. You're right? Moving right out. Believe, people, before it's too late. Now, we find out that he smote him in the mouth and said, Which way the Spirit of God? Micah said, I seen God sitting upon the throne, and all he called the delegates of heaven. He said, Who can we get to go down and deceive Ahab? The, and in one lying spirit come up and fell before God, a liar. And remember, that lying spirit got into those prophets. Amen. They ought to have known then that the spirit was up on them wasn't according to the word. Amen. But they were so carried away because they were the king's prophets. Because they had everything fine. And that's what 
the church has done today. You got away from that old passion experience man years ago when he stood on the street corner and preached the gospel. Come out of those organizations and call yourself a free people. Hey, because you're wrapped in it again Amen. like a hog to its wallow or a dog to its vomit. Amen. It made him vomit the first time and it'll make him vomit again. Amen. That's right. God spew you from his mouth. He said, you're lukewarm, neither hot or cold. Have a few meetings and just play a few music and sing a little bit. Once absolutely, it's almost become a disgrace to Christianity. My son called me over the other day to look at a television uh, are supposed to be singing be where the people come that bunch of little Ricky standing there and shaking around like his rock and roll and singing them hymns it's a disgrace to Jesus Christ Amen. there's no more solemnity in the church at all it seems like it's all become a rock and roll something in a fashion show and instead of the church of the living God where Jesus Christ can manifest himself in power it seems to be there is something wrong somewhere you're slipping away and the Bible said it would be that way See, look where you're at be careful Wake up before it's too late. Now, we find out, he said, who can we get to go out there and to see they have to get him up there to fulfill that prophet's word? See, if the prophet said a word, heavens and earth will pass away, but it can't fail. It's got to come to pass. So that's what it had to take place. He said, put this man in the inner jail. Feed him with bread of sorrow and water of sorrow. When I'll return in peace, I'll take care of him. Micah stood there firm knowing he had the Spirit of God. Amen. His prophecy, his visions was right. His message was right because it was thus saith the Lord from the vision, thus saith the Lord from the word. Amen. It had to be right. Amen. Was thus saith the Lord. He said, if you return at all, God never spoke to me. Amen. And you know what happened? Sure. Yeah. You understand, brother. Listen, sure, Caiaphas, says, he couldn't see it. Why didn't he look down? He was a, he was a bishop. He was a pope. Of all the churches together. Why couldn't that man see Jesus stand there? Why couldn't he understand? When they were singing the 23rd Psalm, the 22nd Psalm rather, in the church, and my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And there he's hanging on the cross. The very scriptures, the very God that they were worshiping, they were condemning him and killing him for a fanatic. There it is. It's shocking if I tell you that's just about to repeat again. The Bible said he was on the outside trying to knock to get in. And nobody would let him in. He that I uh, love, I chasten and rebuke, I scold him, I shake him down. But it's because I love him. Open up and let me come in. Okay. Now, remember, I didn't want to get in the church. It's he, the individual. He couldn't get in the church, had him locked on. Only, only organization of all of them is this church age that he was on the outside of the church. Play out! Refused, rejected because he was only manifested and temporarily in the other churches in a form of justification and so forth. But in here, the age is coming now is the full manifestation of the vindication of Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Oh, I'll admit we got a lot of impersonators. But examine the first one, the original. Amen. Moses went out with the commandments of God to deliver Israel. And when he did, he performed some miracles. The impersonators followed him. If they had been first, he would have been the impersonator. Amen. See, you had the word of the Lord, and the Lord vindicated you, set still. And you know that same thing's promised in the last days? Amen. As Jambres and Jambres whispered Moses. Amen. So all these men of reprobate mind concerning the truth. Amen. When an organization keeps a, takes a man right down through that organization, it showed it did not come from God because God does those things to track the people's mind, and then the message follows it. If it isn't, then it's not God. It's not God. God always does that. Judas couldn't understand it. He walked right with him. He didn't see it. Amen. But the real ordained of God, that real Jane, that real germ of soul of God that was in God before the foundation of the world. Remember, you that's really got the Spirit of God in you tonight, you were here in Christ because He was the fullness of the Word. Amen. He was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. God was in Christ, re uh, reconciling the world to Himself. Do you believe that? Look, he was in Christ. Then if you were in God, a Jane, a word, an attribute from the beginning, then you walk with him here on earth. Amen. You talk with him on earth. Amen. You suffered with him on earth. Amen. You died with him at Calvary and you rose with him again. Amen. Now you're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Communing with him the word as it feeds into your soul that man shall live Ooh. by every word that 
proceed. Not the Methodist word, the Baptist word. Remember, if there was any left over in the sacrifice, it must be burned before morning because tomorrow's another church age. Amen. Is that right? right. Excellent. It's true. A symbol type of the sacrifice. The door said, I'll make one place. Don't You won't worship me in every door that I'll give you, but there's one door, and in that door, I'll put my name. And where the Lord puts his name, that's the place that God will receive your sacrifice. Amen. We made all kinds of doors, but God made a door. God made a door. And that door was St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am that door. Amen. God put his name in Jesus. Do you believe that? Amen. He was the son of God. Every son comes in his father's name. He said, I come in my father's name. You receive me not. I come in my father's name. You come in your father's name. Jesus come in his father's name. So his father's name is Jesus. Amen. It's exactly because he came in his father's name. And you receive it. Another will come and him you will receive. Amen. You'll take your denominations and go on with them. It's going. The Bible says they were raised up to fulfill this place blind, naked, and don't know it. Church religion, oh, very pious. Just the same as Cain was. Make a sacrifice, make everything. Just the same as Abel did. But by revelation, it was revealed to him what the sacrament was. Amen. Not fruits of the field and something you do with your hand. The believer can see the Word made flesh. The others cannot do it. Amen. All them Israelites said they seen Moses perform that. He brought them right up to the great council of words to be held. Every one of them said, we'll go with Balaam because we think Dr. Balaam's right. He's smarter, more educated, everything, so we'll just take it. And God never did forgive them. He destroyed them right there in the wilderness. And Jesus said himself, they'll never come. They're none of them saved. Jesus said, they said, our fathers eat men in the wilderness for 40 years. He said, they're everyone dead. Eternally separated from God. Amen. They're everyone dead. Certainly, because they listened to an era when Moses had vindicated of God and a leader to show them the way to the promised land. And they had come so far, all right, but then they wouldn't go on with it. Now, believers can see it, but unbelievers cannot see that uh, vindicated. Look how pious Caiaphas was. Well. Look how all them priests how pious was. Well. And Jesus turned around and said, You are your father the devil and his works you'll do. But there was a few believers sitting there. You think them disciples could have understood what Jesus said? I am my father alone. <laughs> they couldn't have explained it. When he said, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. Could they explain it? No. But they believed it. Amen. Because they seen God being vindicated and made flesh. Jesus said, if I do not the works of my Father, then believe me not. But if I do the works of my Father, the Word that's predicted for me to do, then you, if you can't believe me, believe the works that I do, that you might be saved. Amen. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They know my Word. They see it when it's vindicated for that age. Well, Jephthah says, know the Word too, but not the Word for that age. He had the Word of what the Pharisees had poked into him, but not the vindicated Word of the hour. They know my voice. They know my sign. They know my wonder. How now... To, oh, let's get back to our text because we're just going to miss a lot of this scripture if we don't because i got to close in the next few minutes and I was going to go meet 10 o'clock in a few minutes. I love him. Amen. Friends, you people who walked down that aisle and put that offering in there a while ago, people that fed my children put clothes on their back. The people that put your money that you hard earned in an offering plate, you know where that goes? That helps take me overseas to the heathens. It never has heard anything about God. That's what I do with it. Every penny, God's my judge. Here's some of my, uh, a man sitting right here now that's in the treasure of my church. I get $100 a week. That's all. The rest of it goes to sponsor overseas meeting. Where they can't come, the churches won't have me. They don't want me. No. That's right. They turn me down. He, they say he's a Jesus only or he's something like that or some heretic fanatic and all like that, a, a Jezebel. And I, I look for that. They call my Lord Jezebel. They call him uh, not a Jezebel, but a Beelzebub. They call him all those bad names. If they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call them the best disciple? So that don't make a difference. And you yourself, by the help of God, will you think I'd stand up here a big hypocrite and tell you something? Or wouldn't I fall right in line with the thing if I thought it was from God? But if I love you and know what's the truth, have you ever heard me say anything in the name of the Lord but what comes to pass? No, I asked anybody. The thousands of things has been said, they all come to pass. You remember that time when Samuel was called out, I believe it was, and he said uh, Israel wanted to make themselves like the rest of the nations? That's what you Pentecostals are coming to. You want to act like the rest of the people. 
You're not them kind of people. Amen. Keep away from it. Amen. The big churches and big fine things. Oh, brother, don't do that. We preach the coming of the Lord is at hand. Let's get to the fields down there and notify the heathen. See? Do something about it. But you see, Samuel said, Have I ever at one time taken any of your money from you for my living? They said, No, Samuel, you've never done that. So did I ever tell you anything in the name of the Lord but what come to pass? Oh, that's right, Samuel. We believe you're a prophet sent from God. Yes, sir. Everything you said come to pass, Samuel. But we want it anyhow. Amen. And see what happened. Oh, brother, the Scripture just keeps repeating itself back and forth through the Scripture because it's God's way of doing it, you see. You see, you hit these kind of times. Let's get to our text right quick. Now, I've been all this time and I didn't come to my text yet. <laughs> it's on my heart. I love you. Don't perish with the world. If you're of the world, you'll perish with the world. If you're God, you'll go with Him in the resurrection. So change your nature tonight from the love of the world and the things of the world and all these creeds and things and look straight to Calvary to your sacrifice. Meet Him there on them grounds because that's the only place He'll ever meet you. He, the Methodist says it's in our church. The Baptist says and the Pentecostals and this, the Presbyterians and this. But He said, I'll meet them in one place, the place I put my name. Amen. That's in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's where God put His name. That's the only place He'll meet you. And the, Christ is the Word. Amen. The same yesterday. It's grown from the feet and thighs. Now it's in the head. Fix it to go. Manifesting in full measure the bride as same as the groom. Now, let's go to our text right quick for about ten minutes, and then we'll close. Now, our text, we, are, we want to consider it. It had, it had happened again as our text as it usually has happened. God sent His prophet, as He word had promised, of Malachi 3, a messenger, I'll send before my face to forerun His coming. Now, if you want to vindicate that, to prove it, uh, Matthew 11, chapter, vindicates the same. When the disciples of John came over and they seen Jesus, they said, uh, uh, John is in prison, said, uh, uh, we come to ask you uh, of whether he, John's eagle eye had been filmed over and he was in the prison, he's fixing to die. Say, go ask him. See, John said, oh, his fans in his hand, he'll thoroughly purge his floor. He thought the millennium would start right then. He thought the grain was ready, but it had to die and go into the stalk, come up again to make the true bride. So he said, he'll gather his wheat into the garner, he'll burn the fire. What's that, that forerunner of Christ in that age, what he said would happen? The grain. I hope you're not asleep. Amen. The grain is here. It'll be gathered into the garner. Why is that bride? That part of it. Amen. But what did he say will happen to the stalk? It'll be burned with unquenchable fire. Amen. Seek salvation now while you can. Be a grain, not a stalk. Thing. Go into the life, not the old dead farm. Go into the life of Christ. The Word made manifest, uh, made manifest and vindicated. So this is the, well, this is a gathering time. The combine is coming. You better get into the green because the shucks going to be left behind. Now we find out that happened. Jesus, to finish my quotation here, this Matthew 11. He, he didn't give John. He said, "Well, wait, I'll give John a book on how to conduct himself, uh, a believer in jail." <laughs> No, he said, stand around and watch what happens. Amen. Go back and show John what happens. Amen. The lame walk, the blind see, the dead's raised up, and the gospel's preached to the poor. Just exactly what the prophet said would come to pass. Amen. And blessed is you who's not offended to me. Amen. And his disciples crawled across the hill. He turned and said, what went you out to see when you went to see John? Did you go see a man that's catering and soft raiments and so forth? Turned around collars and all this, you know. Said they're in king's palaces. They kiss the babies and bury the dead. You don't know how to hold a two-handed sword. And so why don't you go to see a, a reed that's shaken by any wind? Come on, John, I'll give you more money if you come over here. Well, bless God, I ain't Methodist no more. I'll be Pentecostal. I'll be Presbyterian. I'll be this other. As long as the more money. He said, you never went to see a reed shaking with wind. Amen. So why did you go to see that? A prophet? He said, yes, and more than a prophet. Amen. John had just paid the poorest tribute he could to Jesus. No, it had to come that way. Just asked him, after he introduced him and seen that sign above him, he said, this is the Messiah. Then he comes and asks, are you here? Or do we look for another one? But look, Jesus, knowing that, he turned and gave him a tribute. He said, what did you go to see? A reed shaking with the wind. He said, there's never been a man born of a woman as great as John to this day. 
That's right. What a compliment to pay the man. But you see, there it was. The prophecy had been fulfilled right before their face with a forerunner coming. Exactly what Malachi said. Now that's Malachi 3, not Malachi 4. John the Baptist was Malachi 3. Jesus said so. When they asked him, said, why does the scribes say? He said, he's already come. They did what they said. But remember, Malachi 4, immediately after the Malachi 4 prophet, the fourth coming of John the Baptist, and, or the, uh, uh, Elijah, the fifth coming would be the Revelations 2, the witnesses when he comes from the remnant of the Jews. But God used that same spirit five times. Grace, J-E-S-U-S. It's all been Jesus all the time. F-E-I-T-H-G-R-A-C-E. So forth. You see, the number five is a grace number. And he uses it. Won't use this three. Won't use this two, three, four. Five times he uses it. Now, notice quickly now as we finish up. He said, this is he who has spoken. I send my messenger before my face. But in Malachi 4, immediately after that prophet prophesied, the whole earth is to be burnt over. Amen. And the righteous walk out upon the ashes of the wicked. The, exactly. See, that's the Malachi 4 prophecy. Amen. Notice in Luke 17, where he said, in the last days it will come like Sodom and Gomorrah again. Have we got it? Amen. We got Sodom and Gomorrah again? The whole nation. Look at it. Look what he just said about England. The whole thing's perverted. Even the food's perverted. I look at here what science. You see, read digest, I believe it was last month. They said little boys and girls go through the middle age between 20 and 25 years old. I meet them in the meeting. Little girls in menopause. And 20, 22 years old. In menopause. What's it loud to? The perversion. High breeding. That's exactly what corrupted the whole thing. It's corrupted the body. We're nothing but a mess of... Uh, just like a hybrid plant. Or you take a hybrid plant and set it out there, every germ will run right to it. But a genuine original plant, a germ will go away from it. Amen. You can't stand on it. Amen. That's what's the matter at the church. We hybrid it. That's what's the matter with Perry Green's old horse. Up there, he throw that boy the other day. It's nothing but an old quarter horse. <laughs> See, the only thing it is, he, he, it's just like a mule. He's a, he's a mule don't know who his papa and mama is. He don't know nothing. He's half mule and half horse and half this and donkey. He don't know what he can never eat. He always likes to get to kick you. That's right. You can call him and say, come on, boy, come on, boy. Hold his ears on him. Oh, oh, oh. See, like some of these saying, days of miracles just pass. Oh, oh, oh. All these half breeds supposed to be church members and Christians. I ain't saying that for a joke, but it's the truth. But a genuine thoroughbred, brother, he knows who his father was, who his mother was, who his grandfather, grandmother was. You can teach him something. He's gentle. And a genuine Christian that's born to the Holy Ghost and filled with God's power and word. He knows who his father is, who his mother is, who his grandfather, grandmother was. He knows all about it. Amen. You can teach him something. But a half breed. That's what's come to church. It's hybrid Amen. between the world and religious organizations and putting a little word in it, your little word there, just enough to deceive. Right? When you see the real Word of God being manifested like Caiaphas and then did, they turn away from it. They don't know. Hybrid. Now we find out, and in this message, Isaiah 40 and 3, he also vindicated John. He said, A voice upon a prophet crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. The church did not believe him, for he was not of their group. Amen. That prophet was raised out of a wilderness. Amen. Come up knowing no one. He had the very spirit on him that Elijah had. He was a man of the wilderness. He hated immoral women. Amen. Remember how Elijah, what caused his head to be taken from was Jezebel. Jezebel was the cause of his death. It ran him into the wilderness. John the Baptist, another wilderness lover, a hunter, a woodsman. Watch his, he had no education. Watch his, his text wasn't like a theologian. He said, oh, you generation of vipers. The filthiest thing you could find in the wilderness of sneakiness was a, was a snake. And he called those priests, you generation of vipers, who's warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Don't begin to say we belong to this, we have this or that, for I send you God's able to these stones. Yeah. Also the axe, what he uses, laid to the root of the tree, and every tree that don't bring forth good fruit, you and down and cast into the bar. Amen. Hey, man. Amen. The preacher of nature, a great man of God, lived a short time, but certainly set a blaze across the earth. He shot that generation in them six months of his ministry. God raised him for 30 years to get that six months out of him. But God does his own way. He knows what his harvest is. And we find out now that this is exactly what it took place. They didn't believe him because he wasn't of them. They didn't, as usual, they didn't see it. They did not believe God's word of Malachi 3, or they would have seen plainly by the letter that this was that forerunner. 
They hadn't had a prophet for 400 years, and you know, one rises on the scene all at once. Amen. And the people, the believers, believed him to be that. See, they did not believe it. They did not believe because when they seen the letter completely confirm what he said he would do and everything, and seen it clearly vindicated, when the word come right into the water to the prophet, there they stood. As many argue on that scripture there about John. See, John said, I have need to be baptized of thee, and why comest thou unto me? Jesus said, Suffer that to be so. For thus, but thus it's becoming to us, behooving us, becoming, that we fulfill all right, John, you being a prophet, you know the sacrifice has got to be washed before it's presented. And I am that sacrifice, and you're a prophet. Know that. Then he suffered him and baptized him. And he knew it was. Look, they laughed at him, called him a wild, screaming, unlearned fanatic, as usual. That prophet forerunning the first coming of Jesus. I don't say that there are don't have the same impersonations today of, of genuine. They do the absolute. But remember where you see a bogus dollar, there's got to be a real dollar that's made off of. Amen. Where you see one impersonating to be a Christian, there's got to be a real Christian somewhere because if it wasn't, that would be the original. You've Amen. got to get to the original. But check the first one and see if the original is just exactly with the promise. If it is, then believe it. The promise for the age. Then John's prophecy was vindicated in God's order. The word came to the prophet and vindicated him truly as that person. Again, Jesus came in a different from their understanding of that prophecy. They didn't understand it that way. Uh, we're going down to the end now. But according to the prophet's word, it was fulfilled to the letter. The prophecy is fulfilled, but the way they thought it would be, it wasn't that way. Now, how could they have understood and know which is right or wrong? To see if it was vindicated by God. Amen. If it was God interpreting what he said. There'd been false Jesus that's raised up and led a man, a bunch of 400 out in the wilderness and things, but he never proved to make himself in the Word to see, like he said, Jesus, when he come, he was to be a prophet. Amen. That's right. And the day before Jesus comes again, the full manifestation of the person of Jesus Christ is to be manifested in flesh. Amen. Think of it. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man when the Son of Man is being revealed. Amen. What is revealed, unfolded, made known, the secret has been brought forth, revealed. In the day that the Son of Man will be revealed, the world will be in a Sodom condition. We've got it, haven't we? Amen. Yeah, how many believes that? Amen. It's in a Sodom condition. That's exactly right. Look where it's set now. Remember, there's always three groups of people and every bunch of people together. That's make believers, unbelievers, and believers. We have them in every group. They've had them at all times. There was the Sodomites, there was there was the Lotites, and there was Abraham. The Abraham was a called out group. He wasn't in Sodom to begin with. Amen. Now watch their message. They've been looking for a promised son. Look for it for years. God has showed Abraham many great signs and wonders. But here God came down himself like a man. You see, that was an angel. Abraham called him Lord, capital L-O-R-D. Any reader of the Bible knows that that capital L-O-R-D is Elohim. Amen. In the beginning, God, Lord God, Elohim, the all-sufficient one. Abraham called him Lord God, Elohim. And I notice there was two people that went out into Sodom with a message. And they preached to the Sodomites. They did perform nothing but blinded them, which preaching the gospel does blind the unbeliever. But watch what kind of a sign the Abraham group received. Now, we are supposed to be the royal seed of Abraham. Isaac was the natural seed. But the faith seed, the faith in the promised word, the promised word, don't miss it, was that royal seed. That was the seed, Abraham's faith. Amen. We be dead in Christ where Abraham's seed, heirs with him, according to the promise. Notice when all that was taking place down in Sodom, there was two ministers down there preaching with a great message. There's one set up here with Abraham's group. It didn't fool with that group down there. Amen. And what's the one that stayed with Abraham's group? What kind of sign did he give them? He said, I remember his name was Abram a few days before that. And it's S-A-R-R-A, -R -R -A, not S-A-R-A-H, princess. And this man, with his back turned to the tent, the women then were different than they are now. They have to get out and get their husband's business and everything else. You know, but they didn't do it then. They stayed back behind. So they, uh, so the angel sitting there, the messenger, and he said, uh, Abraham, where is your wife, S-A-R-A-H, Sarah? 
How did he know it? How did he know it? Abraham said, she's in the tent behind you. He said, I'm going to visit you according to the time that I promised you. I'm going to visit you. And Sarah kind of laughed to herself. With his back to the tent, he said, why did Sarah laugh? Saying, how can these things be? If she hadn't been in Abraham, his bride at that time, God would have slayed her. So would we today with all of our unbelief if we wasn't in Christ. Amen. That holds us right there. He couldn't hurt, take Sarah without hurting Abraham. See? And so remember, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. We see everybody agree that the world's in a Sodom condition. I picked up a Los Angeles paper here not long ago and said, I think it's uh, homosexuals on the increase of 20 or 30 percent in Los Angeles each year increasing that much. Yes, oh, it's horrible. In our government network, everything's just become a pervert. Amen. That's right. The whole thing, the whole system, church and everything else is perverted. Right. It's in a perverted age. Now, I want to ask you, theologians, something with my brethren. Not that I'm speaking against you, my dear brother. I'm here to help you, brother. I'm here to stand on what God's Word says is right. Hold your hand and bring this crowd of people out of this stuff. Right? But look here. We never have had a messenger down in Sodom before that his name ended with the H-A-M till now. We've had a Spurgeon, a Wesley, a Luther, and everything else, but never an international West, uh, messenger that his name end with H-A-M before. That's right. Amen. G-R-A-H-A-M. Six letter, G-R-A-H-A-M, Billy Graham, that noted advances. Great work of God. Amen. The man is sent from God. Amen. He's got that justification down so pat that he shakes a nation with it. See, like that. There's not, look at Oral Roberts to the Pentecostal denomination. When was there ever one like that? Six letters, not seven. Abraham's A-B-R-A-H-A-M, seven. Billy Graham is G-R-A-H-A-M, six. Now look at the messengers. Look at the time we're setting. Never was a time in history. Look at the same signs that he promised would be given to each group. Look where they're at. Amen. Same exactly, positionally set right in order. Nature, the world, everything setting right exactly through the time. Now don't miss it while we sketch the rest of this scripture. Quickly now, because I'm holding you too long. Call. Looky here. And according to the prophet, he came just exactly to the word, just exactly to the time. Now look at the age now where we're living. Aren't we living right now at Sodom time? What's the messenger to Abraham's group? What's the numbers, letters, and the numerology of his name? You say there's nothing in a name. Don't you never let anybody tell you that. Why did he change Abraham's name to Abraham? Amen. Sarah to Sarah. Amen. Why did he change uh, uh, Simon to Peter and all those other? See, sure it is. Amen. Exactly. That's the reason I say don't ever call your child Ricky or Elvis or something. Elvis means cat. Ricky's a rat. See, when you say, that's exactly right. No, less or something. Don't you never call one of your child children that. If it is, change it right quick, people. Don't you know. You, if you believe me to be God's servant, don't tack that name on that poor child. See? No, sir, give him another name besides that. Mine. I already got off on that. Of course, I'm off on my subject, but... I said it, and it's all over. I, that's why you do. You don't know when you say it. See, call him, farm, a fortune teller, a devil, a Beelzebub, and said he made himself God. Oh my! Didn't Isaiah the prophet said he would be called the mighty God? Isaiah nine six. Amen. Unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. That's right. Also, St. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. you believe that? He was just not, he was a prophet, but he's more than a prophet. He was a God prophet. Why did he have to come? Remember, he comes in three sons' names. He came first in the name of the Son of Man. He never called himself the Son of God. You know that. See, he came in the Son of Man, a prophet. Jehovah himself, the Father, called Jeremiah, Son of Man. A prophet is Son of Man. He come now. He come after the day of Pentecost. He come back in the form of the Holy Ghost, supernatural spirit. Now he's son of God. Amen. In the millennium, he'll be son of David, sitting up on the throne of David. See, he comes. He's son of God, son of man, son of David. All oh, the Bible's full of these nuggets. We can't get them all in one night. But it's just fitting to set this now. Tomorrow may never dawn. We may be gone before tomorrow. 
I may be preaching to a person that'll be dead before in the morning. I could be gone before in the morning. Brother, sister, that's not myth. That's actual facts. We don't know what time we're going. You'll not have any chance after that last breath leaves your body. Make it right now. Don't wait till in the morning. May be too late. Notice, now, they had done to him just exactly what the prophets said they would do. Just as they are doing to this very same day in the latest sin age. If you want to look at it, read Revelation 3. Blind, naked, and don't know it, turning Christ. When he begins to reveal himself into the seed form again, the same one that went into the ground, come back to be the bride, just the bride and the groom that's the same flesh and blood, the same ministry, the same things, doing just exactly what he done. Amen. The Spirit... And here they're impersonating and doing everything else, and each one's got his book running, and this, oh, you never hear such sensations, and I smell a devil, and all this, that. This is unscriptural as it can be. Amen. And a genuine thing laying right there before them, they walk away, they don't belong to my organization, my, my, just, see, just blind leading the blind, won't they all fall into this? Blinded by man's denominational traditions, they put him out of their church as God said they would do in Revelation 3. As usual, as prophesied. Notice how Jesus made himself known to these disciples. Now, and we'll close. These two disciples, Cleopas, uh, Cleopas rather, and his friend. Now, we're in the resurrection, the morning after the resurrection, the first resurrection. What a beautiful morning. Jesus is up from the dead and living among his people. What a beautiful thought. He's here the same today as he was that day. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and, and revealing himself more today than he has in any other age since that day. Come through the wheat and stalk and shuck. It's all past now. We're into the wheat again. See, we're back into the grain. Known as, watch how he made himself known to these people. Now remember, as their Messiah, just before we close, of the promised word of the age. Notice, he appeared unto to the, to, as he has said, he due to the prophets. Notice, fools and slow of heart to believe that all the prophets has wrote of him. Had to be fulfilled. Watch it. He refers right back to the Word of God. He never come right out and told him, Don't you know me? I am the Messiah that's resurrected. He never said that. Amen. See, he just gave them the scripture like John did, the rest of them. See? They have to pick that out themselves. Amen. They have to judge for themselves. Now don't go to sleep. Amen. Judge for yourself. Amen. Fools! Slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have said had to come to pass. What a rebuke to them to claim they knew him. Amen. Notice how he approached the subject. He never come right out, as I said a few minutes ago, and said, Well, don't you know I'm your Messiah for this age? Don't you know what I'm he? The real servant of God never identifies himself that way. Amen. Yeah, the scripture identifies who he is. Amen. But call their attention to what the prophets had said to look for in the Messiah's age. See it? Go right back. Fools and slow of heart not to believe that all the prophets said about the Messiah should come to pass. He, as John, let the word of the Bible identify him what he was to them. That should have been made plain enough. If the word had identified him, that should be plainly. Who the promise was, he's looking at, they know he had, someone had to come on the scene at that time. Well, he said, now let me show what the Word says is supposed to happen in this day. Am not I tonight trying to tell you word by word, even to the position, the place, the names, the numbers, everything else, and all the signs, times, and everything that we're right here to end time? Surely you can see what I'm talking about. No, that's so plain it should need no more identification. He said, when he was here on earth, search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life. They're what they testify what I am. See, who I am. Notice, he began with Moses, the prophet. A prophet, Deuteronomy 18, 15. I'm watching the scriptures here. Deuteronomy 18, 15. Moses said, the Lord your God. See, God spoke to him on top of the mountain and all my the thunder. And they said, let, let, the Lord, let Moses speak, not God, lest we perish. He said, they said, well... I'll, I won't speak to him no more like this, but I'll raise him up a prophet. And that's been his message all the way through. That's what's got to settle the whole thing at the end. It's just got to because the word of the Lord has to come to the prophet. It's the only thing it can come to. If it don't, it breaks God's word and makes him tell something wrong. See? 
It'll never go to a seminary. It goes to a prophet. And the prophet is sent from God ordained. And how you know it is and not what the man says. We've had Elijahs and Cokes and everything else and mantles and all kinds of nonsense that went off in the organizationism and everything else. But there will come on this earth by God's promise a genuine servant of God identified by God by his word being answered this day that will set the bride in order a real little minority of the church and take it up. Amen. That's right. He'll introduce the whole there is the one I talked about. See, that'll come. And all that the prophets had said about him and for this age, why, it sure it would be uh, interesting to have heard him say that. Wouldn't you like to have heard him say it? All the prophets said about him. Remember, he said what the prophets would say about himself, quoting his own self. What he said, he was the word, quoting. Now let's listen to the words that he quoted. Would you like to hear what he said to him? Let's just carry their conversation now, just before we stop. Now, they were briefed on all the late happenings, all the crucifixion of the story at the grave and the tomb and the women had seen him and another had said they seen him and so forth. He said they, they briefed him on that. And he goes right on with the word about uh, quoting himself through the word. Now, look, in Zechariah 12, he must have quoted Zechariah 11 and 12, for he was sold with 30 pieces of silver. Was not the Messiah supposed to be sold by 30 pieces of silver? In Psalms 41, 9, he was betrayed by his friends. Amen. Of Zechariah 13, 7, forsaken by his disciples. In Psalms 35, 11, accused by false witnesses. By Isaiah 35, uh, uh, 7, dumb before his accusers. Never opened his mouth. All right, sir. Isaiah 50 and 6, he was scourged. Psalms 22, uh, 22, he cried at the cross, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? All my bones they stare at me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Look at the prophecies he could talk about. Isaiah 9 and 6, Unto us a child is born, a virgin shall conceive, and so forth. And also in Psalms 22, 18, they, uh, they parted his garments among them. And Isaiah 7, 14, A virgin shall conceive. Psalms 22, 78, uh, uh, made it, uh, Mocked by his enemies, He's supposed to be his friends, his enemies in the church. And Psalms 22, uh, again, he was, uh, not a bone was to be broken, but they pierced his hands and his feet. Isaiah 53, 12, died with malefactors. And Isaiah 53, 9, bruised and buried with the rich, brother. And Psalm 16, 10, he was uh, resurrected from the dead. David said so. I will not suffer my Holy One to see corruption, neither will I leave his soul in hell. He is raised from the dead. Malachi 3, John the Baptist was his forerunner. And all the types he might have went to, even to Isaac, uh, being the type of him up on, Mount, uh, up on the mount where uh, his father Abraham took him in Genesis 22. It was now that they began to see who had fulfilled these scriptures that was promised of that day. It was then, after it was late, they begin to see, oh, well, wait a minute. You know what? They knew then that their crucified friend Jesus was that prophet that was promised. Amen. They knew because, see, they hadn't been briefed on the scriptures. But here all these things are supposed to happen at the cross. All these things, fool, slow of heart to understand all the prophets have said. How that the Messiah shall suffer and enter into his glory and raise the third day. Still they go, oh, that's right. I say, he, he, did our hearts burn within us? He said, no wonder their hearts burn. The prophecies that he was given that was fulfilled. Then they begin to understand that their friend, the man they'd eat with, talk with, associate with, fish with, laid in the woods. Amen. That, that fulfilled every word of the promised hour. Amen. There it was. They had walked six miles it seemed a very short time, I suppose, and they'd heard a six-hour sermon on vindicated prophecy. <laughs> a little longer than what we've had tonight. It was now getting kind of late in the evening time. The evening lights had come. It's the same time now, church. The evening lights has come. Hebrews 13, 8. He's the same yesterday, day, forever. Oh, events made clear by prophets. It seems the, the evening I have promised by the prophet of God and Zechariah 14 and 7 may again open the true believer's eyes to the events that's taken place today that's true by the prophecies that we're at the end of. 
Jesus is coming. The very itch. He said there will be a day that it won't be called night or day. He said, but in the evening it shall be light. Now we know geographically the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Now the prophet said there will be a long stretch of time that it will be dismal. Kind of a, it couldn't be called day or night. It's kind of a dark, gloomy day. Now where did the sun rise? Where, that was S-O-N we're talking about now. That the natural S-O-N rises in the east and sets in the west. The very same God. very same sun, rather. And the S-O-N of God rose first in the east to the eastern people. And now after he left, what did they do? 300 years later, they started the first organization, the Roman Catholic Church. Through the dark age they went, and out they come, what they do? The same thing. It's been a day. Of, it hasn't been called day or night. They had enough order that they believed that he was the Son of God and walked in the light what they had. They made their churches and built hospitals and schools and so forth and seminaries, sent your children to school. But the prophet said, it shall be light again about the evening time. The sun will peep out again. It shall be light. What? The same sun, S-O-N, that was revealed in flesh. At the morning time, back there, it will be revealed again in the evening time. Now compare St. Luke 17.30. And in that day, as it was in the days of Sodom, the setting of the world, in the time that the Son of Man is being revealed, it shall be light about the evening time. The way to glory you will surely find. Oh, my people, where are we at? Nations are breaking Israel's awakening, the signs that the prophets foretold, the Gentile days numbered with horrors and cupboard, water slide into the sea. Return, O oh, disperse to your own. The day of redemption is near. Man's hearts are failing for fear. Be filled with the Spirit. Have your lamps trimmed and clear. Look up, your redemption is near. Amen. Amen. Brother, sister, it's a scary time. Watch the things that's prophesied. Watch the things happen. Watch all the prophecy being fulfilled. Then we see what all this is about. It's not a bunch of streak of fanaticism. It's God confirming His words exactly. Exactly. The rock is smitten, friends. Flee to it as quick as you can. Prophecy is vindicating the day that we're living in. Let us bow our heads.
and the anointing is on Brother Branham, and he's now through, and are you realizing the day that we live in, friends? Would you dare dispute God? Would you say that he's not right? When he's proved it, he's his own interpreter. Do you want to serve him? Uh, with your heads bowed and your hearts bowed, brother, sister, this may be our last meeting time. We may never, if I would be back a year from the day if I live, there'll be many that sure now won't be here then. And I'll have to meet you at the judgment bar and answer for everything that I've said tonight. Before God, while you're in your right mind, would you now... Do this much to God. If you know that you're... Just look at yourself in a looking glass of God, the Bible. No matter who you are. And say, I know I'm way short from being a daughter of God. Look the way I do. I'm way short from being a son of God. Look the way I do. But God, I don't want to be. I, I want to strive for that place. I want you to raise your hand to God. Just ever who you are, wherever you are across the building. Because I want to be a son of God. I want to be a daughter of God. I want to fulfill everything that my Lord has commanded. Now, you, God bless you, I guess 90% of the audience. Now, look here, my friend. What if you would have lived in the days when you heard John preach? What if you'd lived in the days when Jesus was your... Whose side would you have took? If you'd lived in Jesus... Remember, if, he, if you'd lived back there, it would be just like it is now. The same Jesus is making himself known by his word. The... And it's very unpopular. But let me tell you, I'm not trying to tell people to leave church. or I, I want you to go to church. Don't forsake to send yourself together. But what I'm trying to tell you to do is press into the kingdom of God. Get these things the world. Church Pentecostals, you people are getting too worldly. You're getting too much after the world. It's just easy. You keep watching televisions and all these things and the way they're doing and all this. The first thing you know, the seminaries, the schools are beginning to uh, compromise here and there and this, that, and the other. And the first thing you know, it's got to come that way. The Pentecostal church, it's been my great support. I can't say nothing against it, but that's what I cry out. My brethren, get out. Call, you don't have the meetings that you used to have. The people are not like they used to be. But Jesus Christ is the same. Let's move into him. Now you with your hands up. Remember, there was a rock smitten in the wilderness. And that fountain is still open tonight. The rock has been smitten Christ. He is that smitten rock. And tonight, so far as I know, the church may be, the time of calling may be already passed. I don't know. I can't say that. Remember, the people went right on having the meetings just the same after the crucifixion of Jesus. And uh, all the people, they, they'll come, they, watch, they'll go right on preaching and saying they're getting saved and everything. Just as it, the world continues on as it was, they say. But it'll be too late then. While you've got a chance, my brother, while you've got a chance, my sister, come into the kingdom of God. You don't have to come in under anything else but just plain faith to believe His Word. He is that Word. Lord Jesus, I know I'm looking at myself now in the mirror of God's Word. Oh, how short I am. But dear God, here tonight, on this Monday night, here in San Bernardino, California, in this uh, auditorium here, this is, this is all I have, Lord, but I'll give it to you. Will you take me as I am, Lord? Will you let me flee to the cross right quick? I even see the messengers. I see the time. I see the calling out in Sodom. I see the signs. I see the Abraham's group receiving the light. I see the manifestation. Jesus being manifested again right among us like it was. I see all the things that you promised. I see the impersonators. I see you said that as it was in the days of Moses, how this Jambus and Jambus would come back to impersonate and still remain right in that same dump that they were in. See, They couldn't follow Moses through that word to take those children out of there into the wilderness because it was associated in Egypt. They couldn't do it, though they'd done the same works he did. But their folly was made manifest. And the Bible says, that's thus saith the Lord, it will take place again in the last days. And you see it with your own eyes if you're spiritual. I'm, I can't explain it. I, it's not necessary for me to explain it. My sheep hear my voice. 
Let's go to Him now while we have a chance, will you? If you have need of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you have need of a rededication, a new life, your pastor won't despise you. He'll love you for it. Just give yourself completely to God and I, while we're here. It's, I know it's been hard, cut, and strange. I don't do that to be mean. I do that to be honest. I do that because I love you. I love God. And I do it to try to help you. And truly, friend, I, I, I believe, and with all my heart, with all my faith, I believe that my message comes from God. It's, it's been proven that to you through the years. Now listen, tonight surrender everything you got. Everything that you have need of, I believe with a true surrendered heart, if you would just stand up on your feet and raise up your hands to God and say, Dear God, here I am. Take me, Lord. No more will I try to use my own mind or my own interpretation. Your word says I must be holy. I must be born again. I must be filled with the Spirit. And then the Spirit will lead me into all the truth. Dear God, here I am. Lead me. Would you do that much? If you do that much, raise your hand. Say, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to. Then let's all stand up on our feet. Just as I.
come into the grain, my dear brother. Hear me. Believe me. If you believe me to be a servant of God, let's each one in our own way bow our head in humility and offer the prayer that we have. If we know that we should offer, God, take me as I am. And brother, sister, I lay myself on the altar tonight too. God, mold me and make me different. Do something. God, make me in your fashion. You think it's easy to stand here and cut the people to pieces like that? It's a hard thing to do. But woe unto me if I don't do it. Dear God, as this audience bows their head and heart in this solemn moment here of closing of this Bible lecture, when we see the vindication of the Holy Spirit that shook this nation back and forth and back and forth, great revivals and indications, knowing that something has to follow that, and then see those seven angels come down here on top of that mountain down in Arizona, when even the magazines across the nations packed it, to see Jesus himself there in the skies looking down and saying that in the Revelations 10, 7, and the seventh angel's message, these seals would be opened, the mysteries of God would be made known, that the reformers didn't live long enough to, to bring it out, and here are these seven seals that seal the whole thing is to be opened in this day. To see all these great signs and wonders that's been done, vindicated, foretold before it happened, and not one time have you ever failed us? but brought it to pass just as it was said. Dear God, we realize that Jesus Christ is in our midst. We know that He is here. He is here tonight. The invisible God is here with us and can confirm every promise that He made in His Word. How you have stood and proved to Him with backs turned in the original beginning before the impersonators even entered the ring, Lord, or entered into the, the, the race as it was. You showed and proved, prophesied and told exactly the way it would happen and we see it's happened that way. And Father God, we know it cannot be man, it has to be God. So we know it's you here tonight. Forgive us of our sins. Dear God, you healed our sickness. Now for, forgive our sins, Lord, of not of being the kind of Christian that we should be, not professing to be a full gospel man or woman, and here we find ourselves slumping off like a denominational chicken. Help us, dear God. Take us and shake us with your Holy Spirit. And if there be anything in us that's not like you, take it out of us, Lord. And plant our feet on God's holy word and let the Holy Ghost burn down into our heart and take all the dross of unbelief and the drowsiness of this day. Oh, arise and shake ourselves. Grant it, God. Cleanse us, mold us, make us. God grant it. If there's any in here tonight, Lord, that's holding in their heart that green, that chain of God that's ordained to life from the foundation of the world, I know, Lord, that they're bound to hear at this hour. So I pray, God, that you'll fill their soul and illuminate them with a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and send them on their road rejoicing and happy. Lord God, they I give them to you. I don't know who they are. You do. I'm only responsible for you preaching your word, Lord, as you repeat it. You're responsible for the rest of it. Where the seed falls, I just throw it. Lord God, I pray that it fell in good, rich sorrow tonight. That it, many will see it, Lord, and rise to shining Christians in this last days. That the great thing that we're looking forward to come will come quickly. Grant it, Lord, and you'll take your church, your bride, and take her home. We see it all setting in order. Come, Lord Jesus. We commit it all to you in the name of Jesus Christ for the results. Amen. I love
praise Him. Praise the Lamb for splendor slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood is washed away. Stand. Let's sing it now. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinner slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood has scoured out. Raise your hands and say, oh, that makes me feel good. Brother, I love those old time songs, don't you? They go down to their heart. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners land. Again.